playoffs of Dream League. We're going to start off with Team Spirit versus Extreme Gaming. We've got an XM Zeus on our hands versus a Yatoro Morphling. Avery, how are you feeling about this game? It's going to get spicy. Uh, these are two drafts that, outside of the Lashrak, you're kind of playing for those late game team fights. There's not a lot of early aura buyers, not a lot of heroes that want to skirmish really heavy that early. Again, unless Laurel just goes Super Saiyan this game, I feel like we're going to go late. We're going to see a bunch of these fights centered around the Roshan. Both these teams really want Aegises on their carries here. And whenever you're playing Zeus Faceless Void with the support Terrorblade, you got to be thinking about going late. This is not a lineup for XG that is going to take early towers and go high ground like we saw when Ame was playing that Terrorblade under 30 minutes. Extreme tried to go for a late smoke uh, rap play to see if they could get a first blood somewhere in there, but uh, fortunately it breaks on mid a little bit, and then it breaks even further on Yatoro, who had a very defensive ward for himself. So, Extreme Gaming, who I believe is the team that fails to get first blood the most, they only get first blood in 30% of their games. They just don't really clump at runes. Well, we've seen them, I think they've lost four runes once this tournament, too. They tend to just split up, and usually when you split up, somebody if somebody else groups, you're just going to feed it away. Yeah. Which I still don't really understand why teams do that, but eh, power to them, you know, I guess it's working out. It's gotten them this far, that's for sure. Though, it is funny, if they, if they get first blood, they go 9-1. 9-1 <laughs> <laughs> okay. when they get first blood. So, I, I don't know if that stat reached to Extreme Gaming and maybe why they did that late smoke there or what, but, uh, I mean, you've talked extensively about the impact of uh, of first blood and what it can do to lanes that are previously advantageous but kind of get flipped on their side when uh, first blood gets given away. These pre rune fights matter a lot. They can just ruin games straight up. And generally, if you want to go late game, you should not engage in them because the chance something goes wrong for you is extremely detrimental. Whereas it going right for you doesn't change a lot. And if you're the team with faster pace, you want something to happen. Right. So in if XGR team that prefer to play a slower game for Ame, you know, they played Faces Void a bunch, they played Sniper a bunch, then it would make sense to some degree that they don't necessarily go searching for these things. Just not, the payoff just isn't as good compared to someone like, you know, Gaiman who's played a lot faster on average, or uh, some of the more aggressive teams like Bet Boom, for example, still in the tournament. What so do you far, make lane's looking pretty good here. Yeah. Or Spirit on the CS board, and the panel was talking about the Zeus versus things like the Sniper and the Lina. Yep. It is interesting because I think all of those types of heroes have... Has been killed. What is happening here? <laughs> he is not quite going to have enough to be able to run him down. Gets really good damage. And now, actually, the Blood Grenade is going to go the other way. The time dilation is taking... Oh, knocked him in. On Mira. Knocks him through the trees to get on top of Mira. But neither... Oh, he actually does manage to get it. The Reflection comes out and finishes off Mira. So, first blood goes to DY and Extreme Gaming. A little weird from Spirit there. Like, I think you just go on eat DY or just let the Lion do his thing, but ends up kind of backfiring that entire sequence. And now it gets some meta usage. Someone else. I mean, does DY die here, though, is the big question. When the Lion comes back, it's close. Yeah. He does. Yeah. So, you feed it right back during the meta. Kind of a sloppy death by DY. Spirit will take advantage of it. Yeah, coming back with meta on cooldown. It's uh, it's got to kind of hurt your laning phase. They're gonna try and run down Mapushka. Oh, got the disruption off just in time, and he got the Lotus away from them. Nice little two for there from Mapushka. Big plays. Definitely some value there. The lane's going well, particularly this mid. I think Laurel's doing tremendous in this lane. Zeus is a high base damage hero. Sometimes he can he can win these matchups. Yeah. But so far, Laurel having a near perfect CS. I think this Zeus matchup is very interesting because I actually still think this hero is unexplored in the later game item builds. Yeah, you I, I think I don't very know favorably of this hero. Yeah, I I think it is almost 99% of the time you should go this shard manta. Because he becomes a ghost lane shover. He becomes one of the fastest creep clears in the game. And that's acceleration. It's also just extra stats, tank ability, scouting illusions, all the side benefits. But yep. that build allows you to go some of these late game builds that I think people, once again, have unexplored and are unused to. You can end up on, like, Hurricane Pike Scotty on this hero. And it's no joke. I, I'm serious when I mean, like, 
it destroys some of these late game magic heroes where you get piked away by Azuzi he hits you, you're getting shard blasted, you're getting nuked. It's a crazy amount of burst damage and it pumps the hero's tank ability up to where you jump this hero, you're not necessarily just killing him right away. Yeah. And I think that type of build thrives versus Lashrac. Nice I don't know catch. If here, that was great. I was wondering how they got that kill, but it looks like Hoodwink just surprised Yotoro there. We've seen a lot of Morphling lane deaths this tournament, yeah. honestly. More than I think in a lot of other metas. I mean, this is this is a tough Morphling game because, uh, like they were talking about on the, the panel, they, they had some great analysis there. The Morphling versus uh, Faceless Void matchup, like a big strength of it right now is the fact that you now have this new Conda build to play with, right? But For that sure. also comes alongside of you remaining very low HP to be able to output the amount of burst damage you need to blow up a hero, which just leaves Zeus in a good spot. Both is, both the magic burst, but also the, the build you're talking about, right? Like. The, the right-click build that you eventually go to as Zeus turns you... It's very good against these high-agility heroes that have a lot of base armor. This is not a game where Spirit are going to really build a pipe on anybody either. They have three cores that want to get in there, deal damage. Again, there's no distinct aura buyer here, so that helps Zeus as well. Uh, he's not going to be playing up against an insane amount of magic resist this game. That always feels nice. See what direction XM decides to go here, but of course he usually has his own idea and his own builds. Uh, I think he. Yeah, so I was looking over his build. Uh, his build is exactly what you always advocate for, where you get the uh, the uh, the phylactery, which I think the phylactery is like a great bonus to Zeus. I mean, you're a hero that's based off of magic burst damage. You should want that. Nero's going to go down to the bottom lane. He just gets that phylactery and then he goes straight to the shard manta. Yeah, I think. I mean, unless you want something really specific or you're you're playing the hero for a different pathway, if you're playing him to scale, that is that is how you have early game impact and still get there. This is no, what XM nice. has done in his last five pub games. Uh, a quick note, though, three of the last three were all L's. So, well, what can you do? I mean, that's where you blame the team and you move on. He also hasn't played it since uh, Baboom Dacha, so he hasn't played it at this event. They brought it back, so maybe that's something that they have a little bit more confidence again after some uh, some bad strays there. Mira they will go down. Really messy Mira up. He does get the OBS ward, so at least something for his trouble there, but that is a third death for the Lion. Another support rotation down here. Shin Q getting very active early, and they're looking for the seven minute wisdom rune. It gets scanned out by Spirit. I mean, you got to TP somebody in to fight this if you want to control it. Yeah, who, or you can split they're it. They're just going to go take the, the Wisdom Rune on the enemy side. Yeah. Claps or maybe TPs. try both. Bushwag grabs him just before he gets speared away. DY does manage to grab the Wisdom Rune, so it is still a split because Maposhka was taking theirs. They're going to get some decent damage on Collapse on their way out, too. Oh, Ami's going to join in on this. Time dilation. That is a bit surprising they to go for it. Who sold, that's why. Yeah, uh, yeah. You get him 100 lower, he's burnt out there. And, and they're going to keep going at it. They turn back around underneath the tower. XM joins them. He's got the Thunder God's Wrath timed. And Mira, oh, he gets snagged. Oh, yeah. Fortunately, he has the stick. And now it's going to be the Hoodwink that just might die. Jin Q does end up <laughs> dying to the tower. Okay. <laughs> Mira gets his revenge. I think if XM committed there, they, they would have gotten him too. But just thought the Bushwhack wasn't going to land. Yeah. A little miscommunication. Nonetheless, this tower hitting... Being hit down by this catapult the entire time, Ame gets a last hit. That is an incredible sequence for XG here. Now, you did trade Wisdom Rune on the other side, but you stole enemy Wisdom Rune, got a Mars kill, pushed the line to base, your Hoodwink dies, but he's not that status about it, and you get a tier one for a Void of all heroes. I don't know the stat on Faceless Void getting the first tower in a Dota game, what that win rate looks like, but it's got to be insanely high just because it's probably almost never happened compared to most other carries. Yeah. And it shouldn't happen. Like, this is a hero that is supposed to get bullied off his lane by Tempo Creators, by all the good spellcasters, the Night Stalkers, the Beastmasters, the Venos of the world, historically. And that he's taking your tier one? This is just the impact of a lot of little things building up, right? It's Terrorblade's laning phase presence, plus yep. he helps you push the tower. It's the tri-lane rotation that happens early on, and then it's the mid rotation added on top of that. Just a lot of little things all add up to a laning phase advantage that gives Ame clear runway now. And the kill threat for Collapse is not there, because one, he doesn't have Arena, but when this Void's ahead of you in levels, he still has Fairy Fire 1. 
even a little extra HP here from the Seeds of Serenity, so not to go on and burst for Spear unless they're willing to commit the Lashrak rotation into this bottom lane and push this tower. And we've seen XG commit resources into Ame's Faces Void before. It's undefeated this event. There's a reason why. They almost always make sure his laning phase is good because they understand the strength that this hero will pay it off later down the road. Absolutely not afraid to pseudo trialing for this hero. And in fact, look at the smoke on the map right now. It's two more heroes coming down bottom. They refuse to give collapse any presence down here versus the Void. I also love this play, setting up the Void, yeah. But I also love shutting down Mars. This hero has been way too impactful at this yep. tournament. I think it's it's a good game plan here. I mean, what are you trading? You're trading presence for your top net worth primal beast? <laughs> yeah. XXS is still just free farming this map right now. You're, I guess the trade-off is you're giving space to the Morphling, who's in theory getting a, a lot more solo XP than the Void and, you know, is, is getting up there in net worth past that first early death, but... And maybe if you had more stacks, then the Lestrak would be ahead of the Zeus, but... It looks like he hasn't really managed to take advantage of all this free space he's had mid. Hasn't taken the tower and hasn't gotten a, a net worth lead. I mean, this is where you want to be if you're XG right now. And you're closing in on Phylactery for Zeus. The faster you get this item up, the more he can win these early fights, which snowballs him faster to his farming items, and the hero just comes online. They have a little bit of stacks. Seven off the Shadow Demon? Not the worst. All right, so this will help get Laurel back ahead of the Zeus. And some extra experience for the supports here. Yeah. Trying to get them to their sixes. Can't forget that we do have, you know, it's no Lion Storm Spirit, but Lion uh, Leshrac is a pretty decent duo. Sacrifices the Cobalt. That's, that's GPM, man. <laughs> and he leaves the healing salve for him. Laurel. Just commissars his Cobalt into the camp. I mean, what can you do? Here's a gate Sacrifices rotation. Sacrifices must be made, brother. Yutoro didn't expect him to be so far out in lane, oh, but it may not matter. There's a five-man rotation. He's got one way for him to use, and he was trying to save it for uh, getting over the cliff, but obviously he wasn't going to make it that far. Too much damage. Extreme Gaming, another heavy, heavy rotation in Team Spirit. Not really keeping up, though maybe they just shouldn't try. Uh, I mean, you need to get something on the map. Uh, I think the trade-off is if you make a five-band rotation for the carry, then this Lesh should be hitting a tower with Edict. This just happened while they were doing that stack, so the Lesh needs to refill resources. He needs to get back on, on the map. And by the time you're in mid lane with Laurel, heroes can rotate back. In fact, 12-minute power rune contested as well here for XM, though he has zero mana. Ame looking for a solo kill? Yeah, does have the Master match. Madness, so he can... He does have the damage potential if he gets lucky. Huge smoke for Spirit right here. They they need to break something open in this early game. They need to get this Lesh onto a tower. They're going to bring him bottom. This is the See big move for goes. Laurel in the first 15 minutes. Is he going to stay greedy? Oh, his team's going to come to him, so maybe DY breaks this for him. It feels like XG no. Yeah, they're coming in with so many heroes now. They're counter Cutting through the jungle. It. They're going to collapse. Collapse is going to get ganked first. His team is behind the tower. He said, boys, I thought we were ganking this guy. They're killing me instead. What happened? They have really focused down this Mars this game. And when that tier one tower is dead, these ganks are just safe. There's no response that can come out. So XG just continue to, to poke at the weak point here. And that was a kill that you didn't even have to commit Chrono for. Ame wisely holds it. You still have that threat on the map. The Void dodges that smoke gank. You have an Arcane Rune on a Leshrac right now, and he's losing his mid-tower to a Primal Beast who rushed, rushed Eternal Shroud. It's done at 13 minutes here. I mean, that is an answer what? to Leshrac right there. That is insane. What do you do versus this right now? Uh, I don't think you can touch this guy. Yeah, I don't think he's killable. I think if Lesh runs at this Primal, he will drain his entire mana pool before <laughs> this Primal dies. That's possible. Eh, just drop it. Hasn't had a chance to use his Chronosphere just yet. Holding Collapse long enough in place for the Zeus rotation to come through. XM now dominating, and XXS is going to get involved now. Gets XM yet another kill. Thanks yeah, nice. to Thunder God's Wrath. Nice nuke damage there. XXS did not even notice. He just got lightning. Oh, almost got him. Uh, this Haste game is... Top. 
This game is turning very favorable for XG right now. They have the tankiest hero on the map, they have the highest damage hero on the map, and they have a free farm faceless void between their three cores. Yeah, what does Team Spirit have? They have... Yatoro. Sometimes that's enough. <laughs> it's not a bad thing to have. He's still keeping up in farm. He's going to have to, I think, come into this game earlier than maybe he would have liked, though, in an ideal scenario. Because mm. you can't just keep giving up all this space. And that point at which he chooses to do so is probably going to have to be the back of a four-man fight from Spirit that is catching multiple heroes in an arena. You have the blink for collapse. It's just finished. So you got to get this arena in the game. You got to find either the Void off an initiation and burst him, chain stun the Zeus slash Hoodwink, if you can find the damage on the backside. I don't think you can go on this Primal. I, I think XXS is going to push himself up there and, and tempt you, but 2600 HP with an Eternal Shroud at this point is just, is just nasty. Time dilation could be very sick. Like, obviously, it's one of the better ways Morphling counters Faceless Void, but if he gets it on the Zeus as well, that could be pretty helpful for yeah. these fights. If Yatoro can find that, it's it's huge. We've seen how much dilation is done for Ame in the early game here. It's going to be great for Yatoro as well, and they'll take that freebie. Nothing big committed either. Oh, maybe it's not so free, though. XM spots the support. Already down to half health. And Extreme just getting damage in from a distance here until XXS. Now he can come through. Oh, blink just outside of that onslaught. To get mid tower off that. So Spirit get a little something here. That was a big bushwhack by Jin Q. I, I think there's a world collapse commits with the blink arena on the Zeus. If they don't get some damage there to cancel it. I don't know if it would have ended too well for him, but you got to take what you, you can get. Pinned. Speared through the chest, he'll die. Now Collapse is going to find himself electrified by the Zeus, so he's not getting out of here. Time dilation coming in from Ame. Goes to Maposhka. They can't fight XXS, so it looks like Maposhka's going to just get trampled upon. It's so hard to make these aggressive plays when XG can respond. It just sets the fight up for whoever's not there, which they have a lot of high damage sources right now, and every fight Ame can join, and he gets kills, and he doesn't have to use Chrono, is... It's just easy mode right now. Dying now you have a blink on this Primal. He was a problem on the front line. Now he's going to be on your back line. And the Zeus is just... combing through this map right now. Shard done, Phylactery done. He's already, you know, a third of the way to this Manta. Yeah. Once, like, you get that Shard, it helps you farm so much if you oh, yeah. have control of the map, because... Like, most of the time, you just you have a little bit of man pro mana problems. But, uh, obviously, with the shard... Yeah, that's the biggest thing. You can farm as fast as you can using your entire mana pool without using your mana pool, which means you're ready to join any sort of fight or skirmish. Another huge benefit of that build. Shield rune on Laurel with Voodoo Mask. He's Is he going to be able to get it off? He's going to be grabbed, pulverized to the ground, pulled in by the bat bushwhack, and shot through by Jin Q. No chance. Whew. They're going to look to defend as well. This is... DY will be putting himself out there saying, yeah, you guys can go on me if you want. And that sort of bait would set up Ame if they ended up going on him for a Chronosphere, but not the case. Spirit, well, uh, maybe. Just so fearful of this extreme lead that they have right now. This has just been a great early game for XG. Really showcasing what they can do when everything's coming together. They've played around the right heroes at the right points. They've shut down Team Spirit's moves. Made the first moves versus a lot of those smokes. Got some really valuable early T1s and have played aggressively in Team Spirit's side of the jungle. Just punished the fact that Yatoro hasn't been able to find the same teamfight impact that Ame has so far. And they just could not get kills on XXS like Collapse faced in that early game. He's got four deaths in this game. It's just been catch up for him. Stealing some stacks will be a nice find. I mean, he would love to kill the Zeus here, but there's no help. Without Spear, that is an impossibility here. I mean, this is a tanky Still gonna Zeus. stick around waiting for the rotation of Laurel. Yeah, this is a kill they really want because they know this is the solo on the map. 
They thought XM was leaving. They want to be able to catch him now. Laurel is within striking distance. XM trying to fight back. Goes for the hop. Doesn't dodge the spear. But with Ame coming in, Laurel's like, sorry, man. I, I can't take that fight with you. And this is where I talk about this. Zeus tanks up more than people expect. He doesn't even have that Manta yet. He's 2,000 HP with 15 armor. Yeah. That's a double damage Mars with double bracer. He deals half his HP. You need the Lesh there for that entire kill. Things are not connecting right now for Spirit, but they are down 5k, not insurmountable. You've got Bloodstone on Leshrac, but Spirit Festival is already done by DY. Whoops. Bit of a miss there. But it doesn't matter, perhaps. Okay. XM is a little skittish. Maybe for the best. Laurel is within the neighborhood. BKB on the way. Does he even need it? <laughs> it's a nice BKB game for sure. And Mjolnir done. That is a very fast timing for this void. It's going to be lightning all over the battlefield. Oh yeah. Lightning Storm, all of Zeus, Mjolnir. And another situation where Laurel cannot back up his teammates because Extreme Gaming just using overwhelming force as these kills come in. Have to find some overextension or something. Bait XG into a bad fight. Set it up for the Morphling and the Lesh to get the damage out. Yeah, I mean, that's the best situation, right? If they dive into the, the Tier 2 area, then Morphling has a better chance of getting a good time dilation on Extreme, which goes a long way. BKB, next item for XXS. He has indeed not died since he picked up that Eternal Shroud, and the BKB will just cement that. The Zeus build is, is online. So these waves are going to start getting shoved a lot more, which could, in theory, set up a lot more vision and control on the map for XG. These things push fast. So they're undealt with. The spirits do have some ways to kill them. But it's not really about you wanting to go and kill Zeus Legions. It's just extra GPM for XM right now. In a game where he's been untouched 7-0, and zero, and they're looking at Roshan. They can do it pretty fast here with the Lightning Boys. Yep, both of them do a pretty decent amount. If you want to pop the Manta for some extra damage, they can. And I mean, you can, not necessary. You can choose who you want to give this Aegis to, honestly. It, I feel like you probably are going Ame here, but... If Ame just wants to farm this game, you give it to somebody else to go fight. It's another route you can go. It just depends on how Oh, fast. no, it happened! It happened! You know it was going to happen eventually. It's the trials of playing oh Morphling versus God. Zeus. Oh, he's mad. Yeah, that is a how did he see me? How did he know? Yeah, he had no vision. What? Well, what? He might have glimpsed it off a TB illusion that was near that ancient spot. That's the only thing I saw on the map. Yeah. I don't know if it gave vision for a brief second. It, I also might have just been a scouting ult because we're roaching. Let's see where they are, you know? Yeah, that's what I <laughs> Might have just been was, bad but... luck. The only thing I saw remotely close there was that TB illusion. But I think Yatoro... They immediately smoke up while Yatoro is still dead. They're going to go for it. Arena? No, hop outside of it. Instead, they'll get DY. He'll burn out, but not a problem here because uh, Extreme Gaming, very happy with this initiation. XX has already brought down Maposhka. Ame's looking for the Chronosphere. He has the Aegis, so even if they kill him here, still has a chance to get it off. Bushwhack holds Laurel in, but it looks like they're going to be able to make an escape before Ame is back up and can stop their further retreat. Didn't want to chrono those two there. Kind of interesting with the SD dead, there's no save. Maybe just too low resources on the Zeus, but that'll be a free Aegis to the side of Team Spirit. They did not give up much to snag that. Yeah, or one move for some pressure. Two. Yeah, DY pinging there. They got to have a lane ward, guys. No, not the case. Team Spirit just made a, a bold smoke play. And yeah, worked. I mean, XM just soul read the, the best carry player in the world, so what can you do, you know? Ame might have to lower him a little bit on that tier list. Tip for tat. I don't know if an S tier carry would have <laughs> would have died to that wrath. I don't know. Yeah, this, this this couple that greatest love affair Dota 2 has had. Somebody's going to be heartbroken after the end of this one because somebody is getting Radiant's eliminated. Tower is under attack. Is it Toro or is it Ame? Up by 7k. Not the worst 
for Team Spirit, especially if they can connect on one of these smoke ganks. Oh, DY, he just keeps on running into them, and that's okay for Extreme. They're well positioned to be able to put the damage in and put Collapse down. Now the wait for him on through. Chronosphere does land. He'll plat bash down Maposhka, bludgeon Mira to death, and now look for some more. Laurel and Yutoro already out, though. Not Another move that XG just... The, the read is too easy for them. Oh, yeah. They're just planning there. They break with the hero that they don't give a damn about. And then you get the Terrorblade low. You don't even want to go in that fight because you're just going to thunder whoever jumps next. And the second you get broke like that, Thunder's God Wrath goes out, Acorn, XXS charges in. That fight is over. And when you got this much... When you're, you're up by this much, any sort of additional catch you have is so scary. And that, that is a new item right there. The Gleipnir now adds a lot to Jin Q. We also have the BKB for XXS, so he can all in somebody, right? He could just blink, BKB, grab Laurel, bam, 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 you know, do what he can. Ah, it feels like Spirit is running out of, of plays to make here. Yeah. Like, these keep going this wrong. BKB done for XM, so they're going to have triple BKB cores here in the next minute. Like, I got a question how many, like, smokes they even have left yeah, on Team Spirit, right? These BKBs are just going to prevent a lot of your, your comeback potential off some of the spell damage. Disruption only sets up XXS as he is going to squash Maposhka. I like him. I've liked this vessel terribly the more I watch it. Just being able to reflect a core in the fight and toss this vessel on them is it's a debilitating amount of damage. Yeah. It's very obnoxious, you're slowed, you're not healing, you're you're ticking down. For the right carries, for sure. I mean, yeah, for the more fleshes game, it's just <laughs> immense yeah. value. Those guys are not happy with this matchup at all. So blink for Laurel. He's, they're going to try and find the damage dealers here. The Hoodwink, the Zeus, the Terrorblade. You have to find these, or you somehow find Ame and just chain stun him down. That is set up on bottom tough. lane. They're trying to trade tier twos right now, but XXS is, he was setting up. Maybe his team wasn't uh, ready to rotate for it. He just backs away, cleans up the wave as it pushes into the Tier 3. But, oh, Extreme are going to make this move. Instead of teleporting to Tier 2, they're going to backstab Team Spirit. And XXS is going to lead the way. But he did manage to get off the more strength on Yatoro. They spot out Mira. Ooh, doesn't quite hit the stun there. Ame, he'll get the bashes eventually and bring down Mira. Looking for Yatoro. Oh, got him on the onslaught. Yatoro's not getting away. XXS just robbed him of that escape. And now they'll take his life if they can oh, catch up to him. <laughs> oh no, the time dilation slowing down Extreme in their chase. XM will catch up. That's a hard but they to can't catch. get there. <laughs> I mean, you got a Chrono here. The problem is you, you can't catch the Chrono because he's as fast as you are. Yeah, he just keeps on waveforming and time walking and waveforming and time walking. And he's gone. Still finding farm on this morph. Big question is, like, what do you hit here to try and take that fight and turn this game around? He's not going this Conda build, so you're not going to have some crazy burst damage. He is going the, the right-click morph, trying to meet these heroes head-on. And it'll be the Parasma build up for XM. So I was talking about, you know, the weird ways you can itemize this hero. Like, there's so many routes you can go, but... It's definitely one of the ones that it's going to cause problems if he can land these, these right clicks on you with a Parasma on these cores and you can't debuff it at any point. It's absolutely going to melt because you're going to have a Shiva's on top of the Primal as well. So you're going to have stacking Magic Amp on the side of XG here to throw into that fight. Buff the Zeus up, buff the Primal up, buff the Hoodwink up. Double Maelstrom build between the Void and the Hoodwink getting thrown into that as well. And again, you don't have a Pipe Buyer. So normally he goes Dragonlance as part of this build, but I guess he doesn't need to with a Morphling Lashrak. Oh, that was almost a three-man. Instead, it's a one-man, but that's okay. BKB gets him the important kill. That's going to be Laurel. A lot of their damage is out now, and Team Spirit, they're going to have to get out of here. XXS slowed down by Blank the Purge. The Terrorblade. Terrorblade from behind with a Sentry is going to spot Maposhka, who tried to Glimmer Cape to safety, but instead he'll be stomped by XXS. 
One man Chrono gets the job done. If there's a disruption there, that that could be a fight Spirit can take. Yeah. But Mapochko is just too far away. Has been killed. Team Spirit are going to stay on the map. They still have that OBS on the triangle, so they want to use it here if they can. You have to pick your targets carefully. You have a lot of single target bursts. That is one thing their lineup can excel at, and that was a gem on the ground? Uh, must huh. have been Maposhka's? Yeah, okay. Oh, they recover it. Oh, that's good. That is why his courier died. So I guess XG just did not see it at all in the fight. Take a quick Tormentor. Boomerang. Some more Spalliamp. Why not? It's going to be Wind Waker off that Aether Lens for Collapse. So trying to get another source of Chrono Save or interrupt for a Pulverize going in. I like the idea because I think you have to kind of play for the other two cores. I think his game was just too slow to provide some scaling force on his own right now. And you, you have to contest this next Roshan. I think if you give Aegis here to the Faceless Void, that team fight is deadly. So you're trying to, to hit your own power spike right here. Try and get Yatoro and collapse their next items. Use this Lesh as a front line and use that disruption to bail him out of the big Chrono. If all that happens, you, you can win a fight. You can take down one or two cores, have enough numbers that you can control Roshan. Dyer's XG do not want to let you get there. Attack. DY is the one lagging behind the team right now, and he, he has the ores, but he can TP this outpost, and he will, so he will bait that fight on the front oh, line. Oh, they're definitely going to jump him. And they are going to pay a price for it. It's immediately XXS goes through, grabs the Mars, popped like a grape. He's just gone instantly. They do manage to trade out for DY, but again, it's a support for core. DY will take that every time. This is for Roche control. All right, Lesh Sun, we've, we've seen Laurel do some work with this shard. XX is just going in the trees, very often a, a staging point for these team fights. Ame? Got both subs. He'll got both supports. He'll take that for sure. Oh, yeah. Mows down the back line. Team Spirit can no longer fight for this Roshan, but it is not up for a minute, so I guess they'll get a chance. You say Ame popped those supports like two grapes there, Austin? No. I said that for the Mars. Who yeah, died I'm saying, very would you quickly. would you say it for that play? No, I say they got mowed down. Oh, they got cut down in their prime. Yeah, huh? they sh got sheared. Through. I see. Just checking here, trying to keep up with all your catchphrases. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm I'm adding some variants now. Thirty seconds until okay. Roshan. Later, spawn. But finally, somebody went back for the Mage Slayer. Man, I I felt like this was all these hoodwinks. I know Gleipnir is the hot item, but I feel like Mage Slayer is still worth it on the hero. Especially versus these magic carries, like yeah. Lesh. These heroes like Lesh, Pudge, that don't have an alternate route. What do they do versus it, right? Mm -hmm. I agree. This this item is still very strong on the right hero versus the right hero. Maybe it's not universally bought anymore, but it didn't just disappear entirely. XG still waiting for this Rose spawn. I mean, Spirit, no, it hasn't been done yet, so... There's a world you can test here. There's no Chronosphere. No Thunder God for a little bit. And you just got your BKB on left. Yeah, I think you fight this, actually. Take advantage of the fact this was delayed so long and XG have not scouted it. They're not forcing it. You have a chance to take no Chronosphere fight for Roshan this game with a double BKB timing between your Morphling and your Leshrac. You have to take some risk to get back in this game at some point if you're Spirit. And this, this looks like the best opportunity you're going to have. Yeah, this is your all-in comeback play. Oh, immediately! Ward Sentry gets him on the Gleipnir. No response, though, from the rest of Extreme. So but Jin Q just showing he's ready. He's ready for you. Oh, Yatoro going to create his own Zeus illusions. Yeah. That's an idea. Don't know if it'll actually win you the fight. I, I would have thought turning into the Faceless Void is so important that you wouldn't put that on cooldown for the Zeus deal, but... Man, they're just not going to force it. It just lets Chrono come back up here for XG. Yeah, the roar goes off and the Team Spirit 
Yeah, I mean, they knew they were around, around the Roshan pit in the first place. They left for a reason. I mean, that tells me that Spirit down. believe they can win this game at that 50, 60 minute mark. Okay. Which, you know, late game Dota always comes down to execution, but it's going to be an uphill battle into the second Aegis here. Zero deaths on the three cores. You know, they, this is actually Team Spirit, the only team in this finals uh, who carry has not experienced a deathless game in this tournament. And uh, Ame is on track for his fourth of the tournament. So, I mean, deathless game is overrated. Let's be real. Yeah, that's what a five position would say. Deaths don't matter. You know what a deathless game says? That just means you gave up on the team. Yeah, what is... Uh, what does a 20 death game say? The team gave up on you. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Agate of Scepter up next for XXS, so he is an untouchable god, but he doesn't output the best damage. Once he gets that Axe, though, that'll all turn around. Thunder God's Wrath to scout things out, just like they did with Roshan earlier. Fortunately, this time, Yatoro wasn't in it sitting at uh, 400 HP. Did kill that Jinkyu courier, courier, so he lost his Mage Slayer for a little bit. A little extra value off the map right now, but XG are looking for the catch, and... Okay, the arena cuts down oh. the trees! XXS will still catch up to him, skewered the Ame, but it doesn't matter. A nice little heads-up play. The rest of them get out, they get a tower, deep lane ward. They'll continue to wrap this map. Haste. And it's the Moon Shard Zeus. Oh my god. This is... Some might say the Hobo Harry build. <laughs> Give him a little bit of a shout out. A Parasma. I call it the, the trash guard. can build. <laughs> By another name, some might say. I mean, what what <laughs> would you actually prefer over Moon? Shard I think this, this build point? is. I think you go Pike or Scotty or, like, this type of scaling HP is not bad on the hero. I think Pike is really good on this hero. Just Dyer's the defensive capability is is amazing. Now the the Parasma Moon Shard is like the highest DPS build technically. Yep. If you can get those hits off, but I also think it's a lot more unreliable without the Hurricane Pike. I mean, I'd be down for the Scotty just because you're up against uh, more Fling Lash Rock. Yeah, that's what I'm right? saying. I think it's a yeah, great Scotty. Yeah. You don't need that much to get pretty good value out of it as long as you can land like one hit on him in a fight. It's gonna be annoying. But. They are kind of playing off of burst damage where XSS grabs somebody and yes. then they hit the sharpshooter and they just want to output as much damage in a couple of seconds as possible. I agree. Right? You have you have primal and you have void to go in and set kills up for you with the stuns. So maximizing the DPS here makes a lot of sense. He just has to have really good positioning in that fight to take advantage of it. You can also just BKB and sit there and, and click these heroes back. Right? Let's say Lesh runs at you. You just BKB and start hitting him back. I mean, I don't think he kills you that fast. The Morphling will kill you fast for sure. Invisibility. I mean, will he though? Because he can't stay, you know, low HP so often. Oh! He's just okay. dead, just like that. Collapse is able to get the reset with the Wind Waker. A little ground and pound here onto Laurel. They throw the Chrono Spear. It actually whiffed entirely. Ame will die as a result of that. Yatoro going ham right now. Oh, and he's going to look to drown the entire team as Extreme Gaming stuck inside of Arena. Cancels XXS's TP, finishes off XM, and leaves the big tanky boy for last. So much for a deathless run for the core. What a team fight from Spirit. I mean, that was just beautiful execution here. The first life gone completely. No rebuttal from XG. You use Pulverize to try and set this kill up on the Lesh, but the Chrono misses him. It doesn't matter too much in terms of killing the Lesh, but Ame just gets stuck in here, and yet Toro gets a free fight as a consequence. And he just drives Ame into the dirt here. Collapse will give his life to set up the arena and says, Yatoro. Here is the buffet. Load yeah, your sorry. plate, son. I'm sorry, what did we say Extreme had? The highest DPS hero, the harder carry, nah, the he's laughing about that. hero. What did Team Spirit have? Yatoro. I mean. Yatoro. <laughs> he, he makes that fight work, but that's just, that's the front line from Spirit getting the, the dirty work done, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, Yatoro yeah, gets, yeah. 
he gets the highlights there, but that is the Lesh and the Mars. Dude, this guy throwing their life down to set that up. He is just clearing through buildings so quickly. He's oh, already yeah. at the tier three. Maposhka gives him some extra firepower with the disruption. They're gonna take a tier three before Extreme Gaming does. He's level 25. He's taking a rage barracks. Okay. XG have definitely underestimated how much damage this Morphling does and how much farm Yatoro was finding in this game. <laughs> Maybe they felt like they were a lot farther ahead than they were, which, you know, 12k lead is not bad, but this Morph was tied with your own cores. And if you give him a fight like that, he'll take advantage of it. Wind Waker done for collapse now, so you have double chrono save up between the Wind Waker and the Disruption. Ame's game is not as straightforward anymore. What do, you, what do you think Yatoro thought about Ame's play in that last one? I'm sure he'll let us know after after the series if they win. I would not pretend to put my own words. I mean, do you think words. he gives him excuses in his head? Maybe. I don't know. He's like, well, I'm Ame's the best carry in the world. It's... Well, he didn't actually Proto's. say Ame is the best carry. Well, I know. He thinks he is. Sure. So obviously exactly. he can outplay Ame. XXS gets the grab onto the Morphling. Disruption is save is there, though. And he's going to be able to waveform back. So, in Laurel with the BKB. They actually go for the Chronosphere. BKB. E it looks like they tried to E Blade save him. Yeah, it works. Yotaro, now. they still managed to get the bash through. Yotoro has to be able to hop away, gets it out. Oh, and now Ame is starting running the low on damage. They throw out the finger. He easily time walks that off. Laurel pushed forward with his Bloodstone. Dad to half health right now. DY's dealing with him. Ame commits. Meanwhile, XXS is right in the middle of these heroes, spreading the damage around with his Aghanim Scepter. They get the support, still trying to chase down the cores, and they'll be able to finish up Laurel. A second Pulverize. He started the fight with Pulverize, and they'll end it with Pulverize too. XXS. Just putting that team fight on his back. He did so much work just charging in there, takes the brunt of everything. And even though Ami does a lot of damage here, a lot of it goes into the Morphling. How did the goddamn Shinkyu? Yeah, everybody just gets damage off because they all have to start backing up and all these spells get thrown out. Right. A lot of damage goes in onto Yatoro there, which means he has to morph up really high, really fast. He just doesn't do any damage. He's running around right clicking people half that fight with 150 base damage. Grabs the Mars, pulls him back, Ooh. gets the kill just like that. A little one-two punch. Yeah, Jinkyu, he has the, the baby crit online. He is he is doing some deeps if they do not find him. Goodness. That type of fight, they do not find him. And it costs Spirit a lot here as they pull this game back, but not back enough. Lane for XG. It might back up here considering there's no Chrono, no Wrath. Missing a BKB or two. Of course, that fourth core in the Hoodwink is coming online. I go back to the, the biggest strength of this hero in the current meta. Is he can always just win you these late game fights. I don't think there's another support in the game that does as much late game damage as this hero as reliably. Hmm. He's got the uh, armor corruption off that 20 talent. As you said, the baby crit, soon to be the big boy crit. Oh, he's got it. He has a full data if he wants to buy out. Yeah. He's got that armor corruption talent, like you said. So, Grove Bow on top of all of that, Mage Slayer proc, Boomerang going in. It hurts. That is an acorn from hell. That is, that's not an acorn, that's a cinder block. <laughs> Someone, someone's getting domed out here. I'm <laughs> throwing a brick through people's window. Someone's gonna get smashed in the skull. <laughs> They can take another Tormentor. This one's for XXS. Speaking of throwing cinder blocks, XXS is now able to throw some boulders around. And the moon shards coming. Hex for the Zeus. He took a quick stop off for that. I like that. I, I don't think this moon shard is, <laughs> is that good this game. I don't know if it's changing a lot, but casual hyperstone can be okay. He has, you know, he has Mind Slayer. He can do some extra right click damage, but. Generally, these fights feel like they're getting decided in those BKB durations as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five shards for Extreme, four for Team Spirit. Double Mindbreaker here means you have to think about when you BKB, you get some clutch silence on the Morphling. Could mess you tore up pretty bad. Love the fact that uh, Jin Q is still holding on to the, the Grove Bow. Oh, well, of course. In fact, uh, 
XM only changed out his tier two Whisper of the the uh, Dread for a tier four. Skip past the tier three entirely. Like, tier threes are, you know, they're old news, man. They really are. It's the tier twos that are the... Yeah, they're better. That's the good shit right there. And we saw those big level 25s for both carries in this game. Really important talents. Backtrack online for Ame. Can try and dodge out some of this heavy burst damage from the Morphling. And the Morphling with his own level 25 matching him on the waveform cooldown. Really nice if Yatoro can get two or three of them off. It also form. means he's got insane mobility if he, oh, yeah. he morphs into the Faceless Void. He's just, waveform, time walk, waveform, time walk. You you definitely want to find that right now. If he ever gets an Ags off Roche or something, too, that's... <laughs> I was going to say, right imagine he gets Ags and he's just waveforming attacking people and time walk attacking people. That's just all he does. I mean, why not just go Ags Octarine? Hell yeah. What, that's can they, what can they do? Yeah, they can't do anything. Can't. The it's ultimate possible. strat. <laughs> So that'll be a banner on top of Aegis. Plus, yeah, your Toro's about to turn into Bruce Banner. It's got an amp damage rune. They got a refresher shard. So they put the shard on Ame, who's XXX building his own, but not there yet. forward. He says, whatever's here, we're killing it. Level 25 means that Pulverize lasts forever. Your Toro like gets put as down a DD. underground. That's why Spirit were lingering there. Yeah. He knows that's a rare opportunity. But they cannot capitalize. Yatoro with all this strength. But what can you do with it? Two lives for Ame. Two chronos for Ame. Trying to throw damage at him. Oh, okay. If okay. you don't have the backtrack, you have the Sunder to undo the damage that is being done. It is so hard for them to be able to Collapse. cut through Ame. Once an arena here, he wants a spear back. He's going to be able to get it. He's going to be able to just stop this. Oh, they spot him immediately. Got the scythe on him while Mira is being run down by the primal beast. <laughs> and he's making a run out. for it, too. <laughs> they clipped him with that Shiva's vision. TP's back in time, so he can try and form a defense for the second Rax. Last remaining Rax. XXS with his own 25 here. He's just a beast on the front line. This, this Primal's just been untouchable the entire game. And the flank from Team Spirit. They're going to catch the back line. Go straight for the Zeus. Try to assassinate him, but it doesn't quite work. They get off the Sunder. He gets off the BKB and walks through the walls. Oh, the Mars is chasing after him, but it's not going to be enough. Well, Ame dealt with some of the back line. They're going to be able to buy back here. Chronosphere catching Yatoro. Are they going to be able to do the damage? No, the E-Blade goes off, so he deals with Laurel first. Waits for the E-Blade. Now Yatoro is able to get back, but without Laurel, how are they going to be able to hold this? Without Collapse, how are they going to be able to start the fight? DY buyback. They want to end it right here, right now. Yatoro does not have his peak damage oh, right now. Oh, the second Chronosphere. Ame flogs another one. At the two-for-one special. They are both for you, Yatoro. I gave you my message. I hope you enjoyed it. Take the mana, Mira. But we're going to take your base. And we're going to take the victory in Game 1 Extreme Gaming. Looking down the barrel of... Pretty straightforward win in this uh, later game team fight. They had that one hiccup, but man, things turned bad in the last couple of team fights for Team Spirit. Now they'll fillet Yatoro. Try and flinch Mira before they get on out of here, but ultimately.